Obviously, Peyton got the goal scoring yeah. record this past weekend. How excited are you for him to be able to accomplish such feat? And how much has he been able to grow over the course of his career in order to achieve that? Sure, I, we're all thrilled for Peyton. Maybe we're too thrilled for Peyton. We kept feeding him the ball against Richmond and uh, he kept shooting. We might've been forcing the ball to him. You know, so I think we were all relieved when he finally broke the record there in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have anticipated him taking 15 shots, but his teammates kept giving him the ball because we really uh, want him to, to uh, be the all-time UVA goal-scoring record uh, owner, which he is now. Um, he's, um, he, he's, he really loves playing the game of lacrosse. I mean, he is in the moment of a game. I don't know if there's anyone more present. Like, we all get a little jittery and nervous, but man, he seems to ignore that. And he just has this stone cold killer mentality when he steps on the field. Feed me the ball, I'm gonna take the shot, I'm gonna put it in the back, I'm gonna put it away. And he's got that shooter's mentality if he is having a poor day. Like he, for most of Richmond he was. I think he was one of 12 at one point. He's still taking the 13th shot. He's gonna take the 14th shot. He's, he's gonna keep shooting. And um, we've been very, very lucky to have him. As compared to the opener where you kind of seize control early on, this game was much more of a battle. Your team faced a lot of adversity early on, back and forth game. What did you learn about your team against Richmond? Yeah, what was great about it was the challenge we gave our men going into Richmond was can we play with the same ferocity that we had for the Michigan game? We control that. We always control our intensity. Now, what we faced was another team that was really excited to play in Dan Shimani's Richmond team. And, and so what was great was two teams that were really intense, a little sloppy both ways, there's no question, that was not the greatest, smoothest lacrosse game ever seen. Um, but that Richmond could go out to a 2-0 lead, Richmond could make some comeback goals, but yet we sort of stayed the course and we kept a positive energy about it. And that's important to me. We're not, it's not that we're a young team, but we did lose 18 men from last year's team. So it's like, okay, what, what's this team gonna look like early on when we do face an opponent who gets two or three goals in a row? and we're on their turf, and they're all excited. So I was, um, I was certainly pleased with, we brought our intensity, which we control, as I mentioned earlier, and, and we responded when we needed to. That was big. You talked about face-off unit, you're at 62% here so far, which we've talked about, maybe not expecting to, yeah. to be that strong. Ohio State's at 63% right here through four games. What are you looking for? at the face-off dot in this game? Uh, another great challenge. I mean, Wheat felt from Michigan, one of the nation's best. Uh, the Richmond uh, face-off player has been very, very good against uh, most of his competition. And now we've got, you know, uh, Tommy Burke coming in with 63%. You're right, th these guys are really talented. And so, yeah, what a blessing to have Anthony Gobriel doing what he's doing at the face-off X and his wing play. I mean, Ben Ware was a man possessed against Richmond. And what Joey Terenzi and Noah Chismar and Chase Yeager are doing on the wings is really, really beneficial. But that has been a very, very wonderful early portion of the season is to see the ability for us to, you know, win, in the, win the ball back, whether we just gave up a goal or if we can get that make it, take it action. Oh, you know, Gobriel's doing really well. And, and we're still not sure he's our best faceoff guy. We're still waiting to get Gable Braun back uh, from injury. You mentioned uh, last week that after McCabe's first performance against Michigan, teams would start playing him a little differently. And then he scored uh, twice early on Saturday, but then was sort of quiet the rest of the day. So what did you see from him and from, from Richmond there? Yeah, I think what Richmond decided to do is they were going to slide to us. Michigan's defensive plan was just the opposite. Michigan was, we are here to win every one-on-one -on -one matchup. Richmond was like, we don't care about the one-on-one -on -one matchups. We'll put a short stick and a switch situation on Connor Schellenberger if we have to. We were going to play a really good team defense, and they did. They chased us into double teams. They whacked us. They, made con they were confrontational well away from the box. They threw us off, and give, the, give them credit for doing that. So for McCabe, he got those two goals early. Their defensive game plan was ready to slide to him. They weren't going to let him just try to win a one-on-one matchup. What I really give McCabe credit for is then his vision. He got those two assists, which were really big in the third and fourth quarter. Dodging from behind the goal, surveying the field. Really similar to what we've seen Connor Schellenberger do for many years here. You know, McCabe sort of playing that second quarterback role there was, uh, was really, really exciting for us to see. Mm -hmm. And then with Ohio State coming up, this is, I believe, the first time you've played three ranked opponents to open the season in your wow. career here. Huh. Um, that's just my internet uh, <laughs> research. But um, what is that, you know, what kind of value does that have for your team and for your development? 
this is this is why you come to Virginia. This is we recruit you. We tell you we play a strong schedule and we back it up. There's a lot of coach speak, a lot of beautiful things said in the recruiting relationships that may not be 100 percent true. What I have found is that we play at a, we play better lacrosse. We play a higher level across the stronger the opponent. Um, I wish we were immune to our opponent's energy and our opponent's talent level, but we're human, right? And so our men, they want the biggest of challenges. And, and so adding a, a second Big Ten opponent already on the schedule here early in the year, you just, you really get to know who you are and find out, you know, and we just love it when you do get a win that it's meaningful. And uh, the first two wins, certainly that. And absolutely, uh, this would be a statement win uh, if we're fortunate to beat the Buckeyes. They're uh, very, very tough defensively. Uh, you can see it in the goals allowed average, but man, they've got some incredible individuals and a good system with Marcus Hudgens, Bobby Van Buren, and the work. They, they, are, they are lights out there. And a heck of a goalie and a, a freshman there, Fayak, who's he's making a lot of saves. What's it going to take on your guys is, uh, to get the job done on Sunday? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think there's going to be offensively, can we break down this really talented defense? Can we win some one-on-one matchups? They've got one-on-one defenders who they truly believe in and I think highly of too. Can, can Connor Schellenberger and McCabe Millen win some of those matchups? Can we make them rotate? Or does Marcus Hudgens and Bobby Van Buren, you know, neutralize McCabe and Connor? That's going to be one of the question marks we see. We have other men who can dodge. And can they get the defense from Ohio State spinning and rotating? Now, they will rotate and they'll slide. But, and now we got our hands free. Now we finally get it. Can we beat this goalie? You know, so first, their first four opponents haven't been able to solve them as they've only given up those six goals a game. But it's a, uh, you know, that's going to be really, really critical is, is can we generate offense against one of the best defenses in the nation. Matt Noon's now in his third year as, as a starter in cage. How have you seen him grow in all of the facets of, of a goalie's game, both in terms of stopping shots, but also calling the defense, yeah. outlet passing, all of it? I'd hate to say that Matt Noon's is, is maturing into a, a, uh, a great goalie because I, he was mature when he was here. When he arrived as a first year, I mean, he's always been poised and he earned the starting spot right from day one. And um, where you really see his poise is when he gives up a goal. It brushes aside, talk, defense talks a little bit, and he moves on to the next one. And you also see that poison in a clearing game. Matt Nunes is a quarterback surveying the field. Is it man-to-man -man or zone coverage? Is it Tampa 2? Just, you know, he finds uh, his teammates in the clearing game who are coming back to the ball or breaking deep for the, for the bomb. Um, we are so fortunate to have a man of his skill set, but more so of his mindset. When Cade was here, you always referenced him as the voice of the defense. Yeah. Has he taken, has Noons taken on a little bit more of the voice, or if not, who, who is that guy now? We're still sort of searching for that guy. I, I'll admit, we don't ask our goalies to run a team defense. Like you see in soccer, the goalies always mad and angry at everybody, barking out orders, right? And some lacrosse coaches ask their goalie to run a defense. We ask our goalie to focus on the ball. And, um, but I will tell you, Matt is at such a level that the complexity of doing his job and helping run the defense is something he can handle. So he's taking on more of that. Uh, the reality is that we need Cole Kastner to become more vocal, and he's doing that. And it's probably why we're seeing George Fulton getting more playing time and earning a starting spot there. Is even though he hasn't played a ton, he really understands the game and vocalizes it really well, as does Michael Prestepino. Michael Prestepino, who's not played much his first three years, is earning time because he understands our defense so well.